Evelyn, I've met someone, and I want out. I looked up from my coffee, startled. My husband, Mark, stood in the doorway of the kitchen, his expression cold and unfamiliar. Out? What do you mean, out? I'm asking for a divorce. The room felt like it was closing in on me. The usual morning sounds of chirping birds and distant traffic faded into a numbing silence. I don't understand, I managed to say. Why now? What's going on? I've been seeing someone, he continued, now avoiding my eyes. Her name is Kylie. She's twenty-two. His words hung in the air, heavy and toxic. I felt my throat tighten. Twenty-two? I repeated, astonished. Are you serious? He nodded. And she's pregnant. For a moment, I couldn't breathe. The betrayal hit me like a tidal wave, crashing down and pulling me into its dark waters. She's pregnant? Mark, we have two sons. What the hell are you thinking? It's complicated, Evelyn, he said, his tone almost dismissive. I've been unhappy for a long time. Unhappy? In our twenty years of marriage, you've never said a word about being unhappy. My voice shook with anger and disbelief. I'm sorry you had to find out this way, but I can't keep living a lie, he said, turning away. I just... I can't. I felt tears well up but blinked them away. What about Jesse and Alex? How do you think they're going to take this? You're not just walking out on me, you're walking out on them. Mark sighed heavily, finally looking at me with a trace of something. Regret, perhaps. I'll talk to them. I'll explain. I stood up, the chair scraping loudly against the wooden floor. Explain what? That their father is leaving their mother for a girl barely older than them? That he's starting a new family because he's unhappy? I took a deep breath, trying to hold on to some semblance of composure. You should leave, Mark. We'll talk later, once the boys are home. He nodded without saying another word and left the kitchen. I stared at the empty doorway, the realization of my new reality sinking in. The life I'd built, the future I'd envisioned, all crumbling with a few sentences. Hours later, the front door opened, and Jesse and Alex bounded into the house, laughing about something from school. I heard them drop their bags and head straight for the kitchen, where I was trying to gather myself. Hey, Mom! Jesse said, grabbing a soda from the fridge. Alex buzzed around, looking for something to eat. I forced a smile. Hey, boys, come sit for a moment. We need to talk. They exchanged curious glances, but did as asked. Your dad said something this morning. Something you need to hear from me. Alex's jovial expression faded. What's up, Mom? I struggled to find the words. Your dad has been having an affair. He wants a divorce. Jesse's face darkened, his can of soda untouched. An affair? With who? Her name is Kylie. She's twenty-two, and she's pregnant. Alex went pale. This is some kind of joke, right? Dad wouldn't. Jesse cut him off, eyes blazing. Where is he? Jesse. I started, but it was too late. He stormed out of the kitchen, calling for his father. This isn't over, Mom, Alex said quietly. We're not letting him do this to us. The front door slammed as Jesse ran outside. I sank into my chair, every part of me aching. My husband was gone, my family was in pieces, but there was no time for self-pity. The fight was only just beginning. The house felt eerily silent after Jesse stormed out. I heard Alex muttering under his breath, his fists clenched in frustration. My mind raced, trying to find a way forward. I needed to talk to someone who understood, so I picked up the phone and called my best friend Laura. "'Hey, Evelyn. What's up?' she answered, her voice cheerful. "'Laura, I need you.' I said, struggling to keep my voice steady. She could tell from my tone something was wrong. I'll be right over, she said, no questions asked. Fifteen minutes later, Laura was in my kitchen, her eyes widening as I told her everything. Jesus, Evelyn, she said, shaking her head. I can't believe he'd do this to you. I don't know what to do, I confessed. How do I even begin to pick up the pieces? Laura grabbed my hands, her grip firm and reassuring. You fight. You are one of the strongest women I know. We'll get through this together. At that moment, we heard the front door slam. Jesse was back, his face flushed with anger. Dad's not here, he spat out. He's probably with her. Laura stood up, giving Jesse a hug. We'll figure it out, she said to him softly. He nodded, though his fists were still clenched tight. We need to plan, I said after a moment, my mind racing. We can't let him walk all over us. Jesse's eyes lit up with a fierce determination. Mom, let's make him pay. I took a deep breath, feeling a newfound resolve. All right, but let's do this smart. No impulsive moves. We gather evidence. We expose him for the liar he is. I'll help, Jesse said, his voice steady. 
The door opened again and Alex walked in, his eyes darting between us. "'What's going on?' he asked. "'We're figuring out how to deal with your dad,' I explained. Alex plopped down on a chair, crossing his arms. "'He can't just leave us like this. We make him regret it.' Laura nodded. "'You have a capable team here, and I'll help in any way I can.' I looked at my boys, feeling a surge of determination. "'We're going to tackle this strategically. No rushing in. We plan, and we strike when the time is right.' Jesse leaned forward, a wicked grin forming. What's the first step? I glanced at Laura, then back at my boys. First, we gather information, figure out what we can use. Then, we consult a lawyer. We need to know our options. Laura's eyes shone with approval. That's the Evelyn I know. Let's get to work. Suddenly, the weight of the betrayal felt a little lighter. We had a plan, and we had each other. Together, we would face this head-on. The fight was just beginning, and I was ready. Mark didn't come home that night or the next. He sent a text saying he was staying with Kylie. The message infuriated me. He didn't even have the decency to call. It was clear where his priorities lay, and it wasn't with us. I scheduled a meeting with a high-powered divorce lawyer, Jane Miller. Laura came with me to the appointment for moral support. Jane greeted us in her office with a firm handshake. Evelyn, I'm sorry you're going through this. Let's discuss your options. I explained the situation, my voice trembling slightly as I recounted the details. Jane listened intently, jotting down notes. When I finished, she leaned back in her chair, her expression serious. Mark's actions give us a strong case. Adultery, especially with a much younger woman, can play in our favor, especially if his behavior affects your sons. What can we do to make sure he faces the consequences? I asked. Jane smiled slightly. First, we need evidence. Document everything. Texts, emails, anything that proves his infidelity and neglect. We can use that to our advantage in court. Laura squeezed my hand. We've got this, Evelyn. Back home, Jesse was waiting for an update. He listened intently as I relayed Jane's advice. So we need evidence, he said, pacing the living room. We start with his phone. He's careless with it, leaving it around unguarded. Alex nodded in agreement. And we can install cameras, catch him in the act. It felt wrong to spy, but Mark had broken our trust first. I nodded. Okay, but we need to be careful. No one can know what we're up to until we're ready. That night, after the boys went to bed, I carefully placed a small camera in the living room, hidden among the books on the shelf. Days turned into weeks. Mark showed up sporadically to collect some of his things, avoiding any meaningful conversation. Each time he entered the house, I felt a mix of anger and pain. One evening, as I was setting the table for dinner, Jesse walked in, his expression conspiratorial. "'Mom, I have something,' he whispered. "'Come see.' He led me to his room, where his laptop was open. He played a video, footage from the living room camera. Mark and Kylie, all over each other, right where Alex and Jesse had grown up playing. I felt a wave of nausea. "'That bastard,' I muttered, more to myself than Jesse. "'It's not just this,' Jesse continued. "'I also checked Dad's emails.' He's been discussing leaving us with her, planning a new life. I clenched my fists. Good work, Jesse. We'll use this. We'll show everyone exactly who he is. The next step was clear. We would gather more footage, more proof. When the time was right, I would strike. For now, the days were a waiting game. But every minute, I felt stronger, more determined. This was our fight, and we were going to win. Mark and Kylie moved into an apartment across town. With them gone, the house felt emptier but the boys and I were determined to focus on our plan. Laura helped me install more cameras discreetly throughout the house. Every movement, every betrayal would be caught on tape. One afternoon I walked into the office where Mark used to work from home. The emptiness was jarring. I placed a camera behind his old books, another fitting reminder of his deceit. Returning to my own work, I was careful to maintain a facade of normalcy. My colleagues at the marketing firm couldn't know what was happening behind the scenes. Jane had warned me that any sign of distress could be used against me in the divorce proceedings. "'Hey, Evelyn, you okay?' asked David, a co-worker with a concerned look. I forced a smile. "'Yeah, just dealing with some personal stuff.' He nodded sympathetically. "'Let me know if you need anything.' I thanked him and dove back into my tasks, using work as an escape. Meanwhile— Jesse and Alex were busy at school. 
Jesse had enlisted his closest friends to start spreading rumors about Mark and his young mistress, ensuring other parents and teachers would hear of it. One evening, Jesse came in, obviously irritated. Mom, Dad came to my school today. I looked up, concerned. What did he want? He tried to talk to me about Kylie, acting like everything's fine, like I was supposed to just accept it. I felt my blood boil. What did you say? I told him he chose this path, and he's dead to me, Jesse said coldly. He has no right to waltz into my life and pretend it's all good. Alex chimed in. I heard some kids talking about Dad's girlfriend. It's getting around. Good, I replied. The more people know, the less sympathy he'll get. We continued gathering evidence. Each visit Mark made, he let slip more about his sordid affair. At night I watched the footage, cataloging every scrap of incrimination. One night, Mark showed up while I was at work. Jesse and Alex were ready. Hidden cameras captured every selfish word exchanged between him and Kylie, who had accompanied him. Baby, we just need to keep things quiet until the divorce is final, Mark said, unaware of the camera. Then it's just us. We'll have the life we dreamed of, Kylie pouted. It better be soon. I'm not sticking around if this drags out. Jesse's voice was clear in the recording. Don't worry, it won't. Mark turned, startled. Jesse, I didn't see you there. Interesting conversation you're having, Jesse said, his tone icy. Mark stammered, trying to compose himself. It's more complicated than it seems, son. Don't call me that, Jesse shot back. You're no father to me. When I got home and watched the footage, I smiled grimly. This was exactly what we needed. The seeds of his downfall were sown and they were beginning to sprout. As days passed, the tension in our household became more bearable. We knew what we were working towards. We were preparing for a revelation that would shatter Mark's illusion of control. We were ready. We just needed the right moment to strike. Mark's visits became less frequent, but when he did show up, he made sure everyone knew he was still in control. His arrogance was palpable. One afternoon, he arrived to pick up some more of his things. I watched from the kitchen as he loaded his car, Kylie waiting in the passenger seat. What are you staring at? He called out, noticing me through the window. I walked out onto the porch, keeping my voice even. Just wondering how long you think you can keep this facade up. He smirked. You won't win, Evelyn. You should accept it and move on. Move on? I scoffed. You destroyed our family. You think I'm just going to let that slide? Kylie chimed in, waving her hand dismissively. Honestly, Evelyn, you should just let it go. You'll only make it harder on yourself. I looked at her, full of disdain. You have no idea what you've stepped into, Kylie. Mark's anger flashed. Don't you dare talk to her that way. I walked right up to him, my voice cold. Get your things and get out, Mark. Your time here is over. He grabbed another box and stormed back to the car. You're going to regret this, he muttered. As he drove off, Alex approached. Mom, do you really think we can pull this off? I looked at him, determined. Yes, Alex. We will. The school was buzzing with rumors. Jesse and Alex's efforts weren't going unnoticed. Parents were starting to whisper about Mark's new relationship. It wasn't long before the gossip reached his workplace, a prestigious law firm where appearances mattered. One evening, I found Jesse in the living room, his face lit by his laptop screen. Mom, come here. You need to see this. He showed me a series of emails he'd intercepted from Mark's account. They discussed not just his relationship with Kylie, but also questionable dealings at his firm. He's been hiding more than his affair, Jesse said. This could ruin him at work. We need to compile this, I replied. This is our ace in the hole. We spent the next few nights printing out emails, logging video footage, and preparing our case. Every lie, every deceit was documented, ready to be exposed. You've become quite the investigator, I said to Jesse one night, admiring his diligence. Just want to make sure he pays, Jesse replied. One morning I got a call from Jane. Evelyn, I think we're ready to proceed. It's time to make the formal move. Thank you, Jane, I replied, feeling a mixture of nerves and excitement. We'll be ready. As the week went on, Mark's public image began to deteriorate. Warnings floated around his firm, whispers of misconduct. It was clear he was feeling the pressure. One evening, as we reviewed our evidence again, Alex looked at me worriedly. Are you sure this will work, Mom? I placed a reassuring hand on his shoulder. Yes, Alex, we've got everything we need. 
and when the time comes, they will see exactly who Mark Parker really is. The plan was set. We waited, bided our time, until the day of reckoning arrived. The fall of Mark Parker was imminent, and, as I watched my boys stand by my side, I felt stronger than ever. The day of the family gathering arrived. I'd invited everyone, my parents, Mark's parents, close friends, and our boys. It was supposed to be a peaceful get-together, but this time it felt like the calm before a storm. Mark arrived, visibly uncomfortable. He scanned the room, his eyes narrowing when he saw the extended family. Kylie wasn't with him, and I could see he felt exposed without his backup. As everyone settled with their drinks and snacks, I stood up, clinking my glass for attention. Thank you all for coming. I know this isn't easy, but we need to clear the air. Mark shifted in his seat, feigning confusion. Evelyn, what's this about? I took a deep breath, setting the stage. It's about the terms of our divorce. You all should know exactly what's been happening. His face turned red. This isn't the place. It's the perfect place, I interrupted. Everyone here deserves to hear the truth. This I walked to the TV, picking up the remote. The first video played, footage from the hidden cameras. It showed Mark kissing Kylie in our living room, whispering sweet nothings while planning their future. Gasps filled the room. Mark's mother turned pale. His father's expression hardened. My parents looked at me sympathetically, their disappointment in Mark crystal clear. Mark stood up, trying to turn off the TV. This is private. You have no right. I cut him off, pointing at the footage. You made it public the moment you brought her into our home. Sit down. Jesse and Alex stood behind me, showing unwavering support. I clicked play again. This time, it revealed Mark's shady dealings, the emails implicating him in unethical practices at work. You've lied, cheated, and betrayed not just me, but our entire family, I said, my voice firm. Today, everyone sees who you really are. Mark's face blanched. He tried to speak, but the words died in his throat. His carefully constructed facade was crumbling. How could you? His mother whispered, tears brimming in her eyes. Y you don't understand, Mark stammered. It's more complicated. Spare us, Jesse snapped. You've done enough damage. It's time you face the consequences. The room was thick with tension. Mark's eyes darted around, seeking any sign of support, but finding none. His father finally spoke, voice shaking with controlled rage. You've disgraced us. Your actions are unforgivable. I turned to everyone. The divorce will proceed. I'll be taking legal action for everything he's done. You all needed to know. Mark looked defeated, eyes downcast. He mumbled almost to himself. I never meant for this to happen. Bullshit, I said. You knew exactly what you were doing. I laid out the papers Jane had prepared, detailing the consequences of his actions. Mark would face significant financial penalties, and his reputation in tatters would ensure his job was in jeopardy. Laura stepped forward, handing out copies of the documents to those who needed them. This is over, Mark. You can't manipulate your way out this time. The family began to disperse, murmuring amongst themselves. Mark sat alone, realizing his empire had fallen, piece by piece, right in front of everyone he once controlled. I turned to Jesse and Alex, feeling a weight lifted. We did it, I said quietly. Jesse nodded, a small smile forming. This is just the beginning. Now it's his turn to suffer. As the evening ended, I felt a sense of closure start to take hold. The truth was out, and Mark was facing the reality of his actions. This was our first victory, but it wouldn't be our last. A week after the family gathering, I got a frantic call from Mark. His voice was uncharacteristically shaky. Evelyn, can we meet? Please, I need to talk to you. Against my better judgment, I agreed. We met at a quiet cafe, a neutral ground. Mark looked haggard, his eyes hollow. The man who once exuded arrogance now seemed pitifully desperate. Evelyn, he began, I've lost my job. They said it's because of the scandal. I sat back, sipping my coffee. You brought this on yourself, Mark. Actions have consequences. He leaned forward, eyes pleading. I still love you. Maybe we can work things out for the boy's sake. I felt a mix of anger and disgust. Don't insult me, Mark. You didn't think about the boys when you were with Kylie. This isn't about love. It's about you facing the fallout of your choices. Mark's face crumpled. Kylie's left me. She admitted she wasn't really pregnant. She used me, Evelyn. She saw the writing on the wall and bolted. I felt a grim satisfaction but stayed composed. What did you expect? You left your family for a lie. Now you're dealing with reality. He buried his face in his hands. 
I've lost everything. Please, I need your help. I stood up, cold and resolute. You made your bed, Mark. Now lie in it. I won't be part of your salvation. As I walked out, I felt a sense of closure. For too long, I'd been the one to bend, to accommodate. Now, I was the one setting the terms. Back at home, Jesse and Alex were waiting. Jesse's face lit up with curiosity. How did it go? He's lost everything, I said. Kylie left him. He got fired. He's finally seeing the consequences. Alex's eyes widened. Wow, he really thought he could have it all. People who act like that always think they can get it away with it, I replied. But life has a way of correcting those delusions. Days turned into weeks, and the finalization of the divorce neared. Mark continued to reach out, but his attempts were largely met with silence. He came to the house one last time, papers in hand, looking more defeated than I had ever seen him. Please, Evelyn, just one more chance, he begged at the doorstep. I took the papers without a word, turned, and closed the door behind me. His pleas faded into the background as I went to the kitchen where the boys were waiting. We're officially free, I announced, holding up the signed papers. He can't touch us anymore. Jesse grinned. This is a new beginning. Alex hugged me tightly. Thanks, Mom. You got us through this. The truth was, we got each other through it. The ordeal had been grueling, but it had also forged a stronger bond between us. We were no longer defined by Mark's betrayal. We stood united, with a clear path ahead. Our lives started to rebuild. Each day, the weight of the past lifted a little more. In the end, Mark was a prisoner of his own choices, while we moved forward, stronger and more resilient. This was our victory, and we had earned every bit of it. The finalization of the divorce came quicker than I anticipated. Jane had been relentless, using every bit of evidence we'd gathered to ensure we got a fair settlement. At last, it was over. The judge had ruled in our favor, awarding us the house and a significant amount of alimony and child support. I was sitting in the living room when Jesse came down, looking relieved. We did it, Mom. It's finally over. Alex joined us, collapsing onto the couch. I can't believe it. No more court dates, no more fighting. I smiled at my boys. We made it through. Now we get to rebuild our lives. The first step was facing the memories that haunted the house. We spent the next few days rearranging furniture and redecorating, turning it into something new, something ours. One evening, as we sat in our freshly painted living room, Alex looked around and said, It feels different now. Better. Because it's truly ours. Jesse added, No more shadows of Dad lurking around. The transformation of the house mirrored the changes in our lives. We started doing more together. Movie nights, weekend trips, simple dinners that turned into laughter-filled evenings. Meanwhile, Mark struggled to pick up the pieces of his shattered life. He would call occasionally, asking to speak with the boys. Sometimes they answered, other times they didn't. They were carving out their own boundaries. One afternoon, I bumped into Kylie at the supermarket. She looked different, less confident, more subdued. She glanced at me and quickly looked away shame evident in her eyes. Laura and I met for coffee later that week. I saw Kylie today, I said, stirring my cappuccino. She looked like a shadow of her former self. Good, Laura replied curtly. She deserved it. I nodded. And Mark? You heard about the job hunt? She asked. No one's willing to touch him now. His reputation's trashed. It's the least he deserves, I said. Life went on, each day a step further away from the chaos Mark had brought into our lives. Jesse and Alex slowly but surely found their own ways to move forward. Jesse took up a summer job, and Alex threw himself into his school projects. One evening, Mark showed up at the house, looking more disheveled than ever. Can we talk? He pleaded. I stepped outside, closing the door behind me. What do you want, Mark? I... I just want to apologize. I've lost everything, Evelyn. The boys, our home, my job. I looked at him, feeling a mix of pity and relief. He'd finally faced the consequences of his actions. It's too late for apologies, Mark. We've moved on. You need to do the same. He nodded, tears welling up. I know, I'm sorry for everything. I watched him walk away, a broken man. As I turned back to the house, I felt an overwhelming sense of closure. Justice had been served, and we'd come out stronger on the other side. Back inside, Jesse looked up from his book. Who was it? Just someone from the past, I said, smiling. Nothing to worry about. Alex joined me in the kitchen. What's for dinner? How about we order pizza and watch a movie? 
I suggested. Sounds perfect, Alex said, grinning. As the evening unfolded, filled with laughter and a sense of peace, I knew we were finally free from Mark's shadow. We had found our closure, and now we could truly begin anew. The past was behind us, and our future was ours to shape.